What is going on, guys? Money Webby here, back again on Monday. Got a nice nine game slate here tonight. I got it broken down for you with six of my favorite plays on the slate two pitchers, four batters to get it done for you on this one. So, before we get going, if you could drop a like in the video, that would mean a lot. Really helps me out. Thank you. Um, and yeah, and let's get right into it. First guy up, I'm going to go with Trevor Bauer, the highest price pitcher on the slate, but I still really like his upside in this matchup against Seattle. He did struggle a little bit last game against Detroit, but I think he'll be able to bounce back very nicely in this one. Uh, Seattle, they have been able to put up a good amount of runs over the majority of the season, but recently they're finally showing their strikeout upside. Um, just how many times they could strike out. We saw Garrett Cole get 11 strikeouts against them last start. Verlander get 11 Ks, and both of them were just in six innings apiece. And also we uh, saw Brad Peacock coming in for three kind of relief innings, and he got seven Ks. So against right-handed pitchers, these hitters can definitely strike out a lot. Trevor Bauer, no slouch in the strikeout category, has a 30% K rate this year and had a 30% K rate last year. So very consistent with the strikeout ability, I think he can get it done again here against the Seattle lineup that is strikeout prone, like I mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my first guy. Then I'm going to get a little bit risky. I mentioned this guy last game. Um, he kind of disappointed. Um, he didn't look too bad, though, honestly, with some of his pitches. So you Darvish, um, I guess he's trending in the right direction with uh, one for 1.6 to 8.4 drafting points. There is some concern that his pitch count hasn't been very high. Um, but typically, it's because he hasn't been too good. So, I mean, against Miami, I feel like if he's rolling, then I'll keep him in here um, to be able to pitch a little bit more. I mean, against this Marlins lineup, you can ask for a better matchup. They have a 205 batting average against right-handed pitchers and a 31.8% K rate against them as well. And you, Darvish, he did show some strikeout ability um, last game against Pittsburgh. He had some good pitches, I feel like, that were strikeout quality. Uh, I was actually watching the game to see how he looked. And uh, last year, typically against right-handed batters, uh, he was pretty good. The Wobo was way down, and he had a 32% K rate against them. Uh, his sample wasn't too big, um, but still, he did have some good stuff against right-handed batters. And in this Miami lineup, it's mostly right-handed batters. I believe seven out of the nine guys will be right-handed batters. Uh, so I like you, Darvish, a lot here. Um, he can be... Uh, he can kind of beat himself with a walk ability. I mean, he is pretty wild. Um, but the Marlins, like, if there was a team that he wouldn't be wild against, he would figure it would be against the Marlins. There's no batters you should feel that worried about. He should be able to get into a groove a little bit. Not much pressure. I mean, there's, like, two fans in Miami um, watching the game. So a really good spot. They're only implied 3.69 runs. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my second pitcher. Then I'm going to go with Christian Yelich here at 5,400. Um, we always know that this guy has huge upside, especially in Miami. If you look at that, I mean, not Miami, uh, that's the dull team, but in Milwaukee. Um, in seven games played, 18.7 drafting points per game. So absolutely killing in Milwaukee. We know it's a very good hitter's park, especially for lefties. I feel like lefties always have great power in this park. Um, and against Dakota Hudson, a guy that's had a small sample so far, but his sample is very alarming against left-handed batters. In a good way for Yelich, uh, he's allowing a 568 Woba to lefties and a 6.2 home run per nine rate. So obviously, small sample, so that this looks way off the charts, but still, lefties are absolutely smashing the ball against them. And Yelich has a 480 Woba against right-handed pitchers so far in the year. So a really good spot for him. Really good upside. Has some stolen base ability as well uh, with around 23 stolen bags last year. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my first guy. I'm going to go with Travis Shaw. He has been disappointing so far in the season, um, but this spot is a good matchup for him to get it going. Want to make sure I get him in at third base. Um, but against Dakota Hudson, I like I mentioned, extremely um, alarming uh, split so far against lefties. He's been really bad against them. But Travis Shaw, the same thing. He's just really... Um, extreme splits against right-handed pitchers. He had a 285 ISO against them last year. Really struggles against left-handed pitchers, but still has humongous power um, against righties, especially in Milwaukee here. In Milwaukee, we know that they have huge upside. I mean, there's a ton of guys in this lineup that can go deep. Um, so I think Travis Shaw has some big RBI potential. He has been waking up a little bit in the last two games. Had a double, had two hits against the Dodgers. So hopefully that will spark him going a little bit. His average as hasn't been great. His power hasn't been great. But if there was ever a spot for him to get it going, back at home against a guy that's been struggling against lefties, it makes sense. And this is a good value. for. I mean, this guy was priced around 4600 towards the beginning of the year. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there 
as my uh, second hitter. Then I'm going to go with Elvis Andrus. I tried to recommend him uh, the other day, but it did get rained out. So he didn't play. Then, of course, the next game he came out and absolutely went bonkers with three hits, including a triple home run and a stolen base. I did mention how he has that power and speed combo, and he had it in the full display last game against Oakland. I think he can do that again here, going against the Angels and a guy in Trevor Cahill that does allow some stolen bases. So, I mean, Andrus can get on first, can get a stolen base. He always has uh, some power against right-handed pitchers as well. So I think he can hit like a double, maybe even a home run off him. And they're implied five runs. I mean, this is a part downgrade for the Angels pitching staff going to Texas. And uh, good hitting conditions always in Texas. Um, and Andrus has been killing it so far with 14.9 uh, fantasy points per game in eight games at home. Um, and he could get up to five at-bats in this game if they really put it on the Angels, which I think they can do in this spot. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. And he's one of the better values, I would say, in that Rangers lineup. And for my final guy, I'm going to go with Justin Bohr at same park. 4,000 here going against one of the worst pitchers in all of baseball last year. And Shelby Miller, the guy was absolutely awful. A lot of 2.8 home runs per nine and four starts. And uh, got killed against pretty much any kind of batter against lefty, against righty. And Justin Bohr, another guy similar to Travis Shaw, where he has that really extreme kind of split. So he always has that good power against right-handed pitchers, but can really struggle against lefties. But going against the righty here, you can definitely get it done. Park upgrade from him for him going to Texas. Uh, he already has some good splits. Some sm a small sample against Shelby Miller, but five for twelve with two home runs against him. So a four thousand here. A guy that actually has been turning it on recently had the home run against Milwaukee. Um, Thirteen points against um, Milwaukee again. Seven and ten. So double digits and three out of his last four games. So solid ability. Hopefully we can keep that going against another right-handed pitcher here tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock him in there as my final guy. So really good. Um, power upside, some speed upside with Andrus and Yelich as well, and some good K upside with Trevor Bauer and Yu Darvis. I think Yu Darvis is a great shot again to win in that game as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. Slap a like if you did. Really appreciate all the likes and really appreciate all the support. If you could hit that sub button, that also really helps me out. We're closing in on 8,000 subscribers. You don't want to miss out on any more MLB DraftKings picks. Any more NBA DraftKings playoff picks as well. I just uploaded that video if you want to go check it out. But good luck here tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you back here again next time.